Okay, recording in progress. Good morning, guys. Today is a very special day. Today is Chafei Shvat. It is the Babat Rebbe's wife's, the Rebbetzin's yard site, Rebbetzin Chaim Mushka Schneerson. Um, today is also Fred Joseph's father's yard site, Jerome. His name was Yaakov Nachom Ben Feivel Halevi. His neshama should have an aliyah, and we're dedicating today's class in his memory. Today's lesson, I just want to share with you something special that happened last night. Then we'll move forward. Last night we had a beautiful class for those that were able to join us in person, for those that were on Zoom. It was the new, um, the newest uh, JLI course. And it was it's the first, it was the first of a six-week course. It's called Advice for Life. Um, very important advice. Specifically, last night was focused on business, retirement, making money, what's that all about, and the Rebbe's guidance and advice on that subject. Um, one of the things we brought up during the class was yesterday's Tanya, that if we want to connect to Hashem in the deepest and most unified way, it's through learning Torah. Now, my boys were home and were watching on Zoom, my 14-year-old and my 10-year-old, he's almost 11. His birthday is the same birthday as the Rebbe. I don't know why I thought of that just now, but he's going to be 11 soon. Um, so Shalom and Levi were watching on the Zoom at home, and Eli was watching from his yeshiva in Nayak. And um, I'm not sure who else was on. I know we had quite a crowd online and I know Steve was on for a while and uh, we had a nice group here as well. Anyway, on the way to carpool this morning, I asked the boys, how'd you like the class? And Levi said, well, I remember you said that if we want to connect to Hashem, we should learn Tyra. And, and that really meant a lot to me. That's what he said. He goes, I, I didn't know that. And, and now I like he almost was sharing that. There's a newfound enthusiasm, energy, and chayas in learning Torah because that's his way of being able to connect to Hashem. And it just, it, it, it gave me tremendous nachas. And, you know, sometimes you feel like, eh, a lot of, you know, people could be critical of the class. It was nice. It was okay. A lot of videos. It was cute. When you make an impact on someone's life that could be everlasting, um, this almost could be nothing better. So let's continue to, Connect Hashem through learning Taira and through performance of mitzvahs. And Levi, I thank you for inspiring us today. In today's lesson, when we do a mitzvah, there's a limited union between the person performing the mitzvah, including one's garments, and the infinite God. What do we do? We do a mitzvah, but we move on. We put on tefillin, we take them off, we put them away, right? This union is even greater than, you, than the union of Hashem with the upper worlds. So it's not, not so fast. Let's see what this union has, what this connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu is able to bring us. Since the divine will, which is in perfect unity with Hashem himself, stands completely revealed in the divine soul and in its inner garments, meaning its thought and its speech. There's nothing obscuring the divine will at that time when a person occupies himself with words of Torah. So doing a mitzvah is obviously a strong connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but while we're saying the words of Torah, and there were some sages, the Gemara talks about some of our greatest sages, that the Malach HaMavis, the angel of death, had a hard time. Doc, you could probably... Right, the things from this King David. King David. There were a couple. There were a couple of others. Happened during Torah. The Malach and Mavis couldn't get to him. Couldn't get to him. Once he heard a noise. Oh, and he, he was distracted. He got distracted. That, uh, that right. So when we're constantly learning Torah, nothing evil could befall us, and we're connected in the deepest possible way to Hashem Echad. So now we know why our parents and our teachers. We're pushing us when we were younger to learn Torah, Mishnayis, Balpeh, right? You learn things by heart. Now, wherever you go and wherever you are, you can constantly be saying words of Torah. It's very important. Today, there's almost no excuse because you could pull out your phone and you have so many options of Torah learning, right, Fred? Just boom, it's right there. But it's important not to read it only with your eyes. You don't just sit there and buzz through it with your eyes. You say it. That's really just as important as reading it with your eyes, if not more important. 
Miuchadim Mamish Bein Tzay Baruch Hu Ba'Aisa Shab Atachas Ayichud. It follows that at that time, when a person is reading, learning Torah, the soul and these garments of thought and speech are truly united with God. Torah is something that, that you think about, Phil, and you can almost do it in your sleep. Na, 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 na. Say the Shema. But when you're you're learning something, you need to use your brain. Brain. You need to use your intellect. So you connect with God. With a unity comparable to that of God's speech and thought with his essence and being as explained above. Nothing is separate from Hashem except insofar as his countenance is concealed. So in this world, God's presence is concealed, but nothing is separate from God. It's only from our perspective that God is hidden in this world. Moreover, their unity, meaning the unity of the divine soul and its faculties with Hashem, that is attained through Torah study, is even more exalted and more powerful than the unity of God's infinite light with the upper spiritual worlds. Because in the upper spiritual worlds, they weren't given the Torah. They don't learn Torah the way we learn Torah. They don't have mouths that could project and enunciate and articulate the Torah words? Well, let's not put them down. Let's just lift ourselves up. Why? Because the divine will is actually manifest in the soul and its garments that are engaged in Torah study since it is identical with the Torah being studied. All the supernal spiritual worlds receive their vitality, their life, their energy by way of the light and life derived from the Torah, which is Hashem's will and wisdom. As the Pasuk says, you have made them with all the wisdom. It says that in Tehillim, God's wisdom is thus the source of vitality for all the worlds. Therefore, it follows and it makes sense that God's wisdom, meaning the Torah, transcends them all. If he created them, it must be above all the world since it is their source. In fact, the Torah, which is Hashem's will, is described as encompassing all the worlds, meaning that it is at a level that cannot be enclosed within the worlds, but rather animates and illuminates them as if from a distance. Of course, Hashem is everything, but when it comes to all the spiritual worlds, He encompasses soiviv kolalmin, and He's because He's giving it energy. If you're if you're if you're coaching, you're not playing the game. You got to see the perspective. It's like last night we used the muscle of you know reading the blueprint. You can't be involved in every single job on the project. You got to be the contractor, telling the plumber what to do, telling the electrician what to do, telling the roofer what to do. Right, telling the locksmith what to do, and you got to be overseeing everything. If you're down in the basement working on the plumbing, then something's going wrong upstairs. But of course, you're all encompassing and involved in every detail of the project. And it is this level which transcends all the worlds that it is clothed in a truly revealed form in one's soul and in his garments when he studies Torah. Even though he does not see it. Even though he does not see it. Meaning when one studies Torah, he's unable to consciously experience the unity of his soul with Hashem, which is attained thereby, yet his soul feels it. When you're learning Torah, you're like, what do you mean? You said I was going to be one with God. I just read Torah. I don't feel that. Your neshama feels it. Reminds me of when I was by a Fabregan in 770. I said, Ta, I don't understand what the Rebbe is saying. He says, don't worry, your Nishama understands. You just listen. Let it go inside. And that's what, that's what happens. In fact, this is precisely why he can endure such a unity with Hashem. If he felt it, he would expire. He would become one with Hashem. Precisely because he cannot feel it. Unlike the supernal worlds where godliness is not obscured as it is in this world. And they cannot therefore endure such a unity with Hashem without being completely nullified and losing their identities entirely. That's what happens in the spiritual world. They just become one with God. This discussion 
of the unity with Hashem attained through Torah study is even greater than it's accomplished by performance of mitzvahs. We started off with tonight. Explain, and it explains why Torah study is so much loftier than all the other commandments. Even davening, which you're talking to God. Sometimes you feel very connected and spiritual, but Torah study is even much deeper and stronger a connection than that. And even prayer, which affects the unity within the supernal worlds. Even higher than that is Torah study. I'm sorry. Although the law requires of one whose Torah study is not his entire occupation, that he interrupt his study for prayer. Meaning, you have to go to work and you have to daven during the day, right? Which would seem to indicate that davening surpasses Torah study because you learn for a certain amount of time. But when it comes to mincha, you got to stop and daven. So you think that prayer is more important. This is only so because he would in any case pause and interrupt his studies. That is in um, that is in parentheses. As a side note, we can discuss this further. And it's interesting because last night we talked about the importance of going to work just like God worked for six days and on the seventh day rested, it's important for every single person to work. If you happen to be one of the minority and the lucky ones to be able to be, get paid to learn Torah, they find, you know, sit in Kailo all your life. That's great. There are people like that. But for the rest of us, we have to go to work. And if we have to go to work, then we learn Torah for a certain amount of time. We go to work, which is also godly, also very, very important. That's the way you support your family and you give charity and you can influence and affect many people in the workplace and be a light of Hashem and a shining example of the way Yid is supposed to act. Okay, so that's as far as the workplace, and that's when you dive in and you pause for your learning. So thus, it is not the law which causes him to interrupt when it comes to davening. The law merely states that the interruption, which he would have made regardless, be made at a time designated for davening. And as soon as he interrupts his studies, he's automatically obliged to pray. So if you could tell me that from the time you wake up and you open your eyes in the morning, you will say words of Torah uninterrupted the entire day until you fall asleep at night, then you're exempt from prayer and you're exempt from work and you're exempt from everything else. But other than that, for the rest of us, for all the for all us normal people, we're going to be interrupting for eating and for other things. So, of course, we have to daven in the middle and davening is also, of course, very special and it affects many things. But the overall message and theme of today is that when we daven, we're, a, we're very close and we can accomplish great things and bring down tremendous blessings to us and our families and really the entire world. But when we learn Torah, we are intrinsically and eternally connected to HaKadosh Baruch. So the takeaway for today is, you become unified with the infinite when you fulfill a divine commandment in a more powerful unification than the upper spiritual worlds have within. So guys, we have the opportunity. If a, if a 10-year-old kid recognizes that and it, it excites him and inspires him, then we can learn sometimes from the children. What, what's the saying? From the, ba from the mouth of about the babes when, when you know sometimes we need the kids to inspire us but we're all children at heart we could all be inspired one second let me let me shut off the, the zoom um oh you want them to hear you i have to turn the camera around uh once again for um uh the neshama of yaakov nachom ben faival halevi his neshama should have an aliyah and everyone have a very meaningful chaf shvat and do something extra special today in honor of the Rebbe. Take care, we'll see you soon.